is a guy that loves basketball. He bleeds basketball. We talked today, and I told him, I said, Clay, I feel like you're, for, for you, basketball is like air and water. You, you have to have it. And he just told me, he said, I, you know, I've never not played bat. I just, since, since 2000, or since whatever, 20, however many years ago, he's always played basketball. Okay, Big Perk here with us now. Perk, good to see you. Stephen A., I'm going to start with you. It pains me to ask this question, but do you feel at this point that the Warriors' run is officially over? No, I don't believe that because, I mean, obviously they're going to struggle this year. I still think they'll make the playoffs this year, especially if they finish and finalize this deal with Kelly Oubre. I think that will be an upgrade, and I think that will help uh, immensely. As long as Steph is in that line of healthy and you've got some pieces around him, you can make the playoffs. Are they going to go to the finals? No, I don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, but in terms of Clay coming back, remember, Clay is a sniper, a, a, an elite sniper. As far as I'm concerned, one of the top five shooters in the history of basketball. Basketball, a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer, a three-time champion, five straight trips to the NBA Finals, none of which would have occurred had he not been there as far as I'm concerned, at least the first couple of years before Kevin Durant got there. I don't believe that would have happened. Klay Thompson is that special. He's that underappreciated. As far as I'm concerned, the biggest crime that has ever taken place against him was when the media didn't put him on the third team. And I believe it was Kemba Walker, if I remember correctly, Max and Kendrick. I'm not sure, but I believe it was Kim it was Kemba Walker. But when you consider the fact that Klay Thompson has done what he's done over the course of his career and the media cost him an opportunity to get the Supermax deal for over $220 million. And he had to settle and he had to settle for like 30 to $35 million less just because he wasn't selected on that third team all NBA over a year ago. That was criminal because this is Clay Thompson that we're talking about here. So I'm really sad that he's down because he makes the NBA better. Watching him and Steph Curry, I mean, it is a show. Make no mistake about it. You walk through the turnstiles to see what they bring to the table. So I'm incredibly sad for him. He deserves all the praise in the world, all our prayers to, for him to come back healthy because he makes the game better. But in the end, I think ultimately when he comes back, they will pick up right where they left off being championship contenders because I don't believe you lose your shot. And as KP explained yesterday about KD, when KD had that foot injury and KD was literally sitting in chairs or shooting jump shots, you don't lose your marksmanship because of an Achilles tear or anything like that. Clay will eventually be back. And once he's back, as long as him and Steph Curry are in the lineup together, they are a championship contender, period. Clay, Clay is an incredible shooter, but that's half the story with him. He's also an excellent defender. And, and you know, coming off an ACL and everyone's like, oh, yes, you know, he'll get back. Sure. I was thinking, well, at least it's not an Achilles, but that's not a cupcake. That's tough to come back from it 100%. And now it is an Achilles in addition, you know, in back-to-back -back years. Look, is the, can they get back? It's possible they can get back because it starts with ownership. We had Joe Lacob on the show yesterday. He's a very impressive guy. He's willing to spend luxury tax like no one else. Um, and he's very competitive, as Bob Myers, the GM, said, who's also been very impressive, as has Steve Kerr, as has the heart and soul, the engine, rather, of that team, Steph Curry, who's back, as has his pick-and-roll partner, who I actually think has been the second most important, you know, piece in the dynasty, obviously, you know, AD was better, but Steph's pick and roll partner has been Draymond. Draymond's the guy that allows him to play five out. Draymond does the dirty work. So they still have all, you know, the, fr the ownership front office coach, star player, and his maybe most important piece. In that sense, the nucleus is still there. And because they just got Wiseman, who may be an excellent, excellent player, and they can either keep him or move him eventually, we'll see. Yes, they could get back, but in a bigger sense, the dynasty is over. In the bigger sense, like, I, I remember the Yankees of the late 90s, Stephen A., they won four out of five World Series, right? Like, it'll never happen again. And they were good for years afterwards. They made the playoffs, and they even got back, Derek Jeter did, in 2009, right? You, they finally get back. But they weren't the dynasty anymore after 2000. The dynasty was over. They were still a powerhouse team, but that level of dominance has ended. And the thing about this Golden State Warriors team is we recognize, look, KD left, and then they had injuries to their two best players after KD left. We got to give them a pass on this season. 
in, in their absence, LeBron and AD come together in L.A. and they win the chip and, and, and the Clippers get a couple of stars together and, and Denver's on its way up. But here comes Golden State again. They're going to come back, and now we're going to see what's what. Do they reclaim the throne or even get close so we can see they make a move or two and it's back to being Golden State? No, that's over now. It's over now. KD is gone. Clay just suffered his second consecutive catastrophic injury. He won't play this year. We don't know what he's going to be when he gets back. And if they maneuver pieces and, and through good stewardship and coaching and Steph Curry, they eventually get back and maybe win one more, that's great. But the era that we knew of the Warriors has come to an end. No, it hasn't, Max, and you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Because when you look at guys like Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, these are guys that don't rely on their athleticism. And the way that they play, the style of play that they bring to the table, they could play like this for the next five or six years because they're shooters. They're not leapers. They're not high flyers. So now when you look at this year's Golden State team and you add an Andrew Wiggins, a James Wise and a Kelly Oubre, now you're able to mold them and to show them championship mentality and a championship culture and you're able to mold them and get them repetition, which I still believe that the, uh, that the Golden State Warriors are going to make the playoffs this year. They're going to make the playoffs. I think this was a great pickup, a great trade by picking up Kelly Oubre. Now, all these guys have a, a year under their belt of playing with this excellent culture, being coached by one of the best defensive coaches in the game today in Ron Adams, and Steve Kerr and Mike Brown adding they touch and twist to it on the offensive end, because we all know how, how hard it is to stop Golden State uh, offense because all of the down screens and the pick the pick action and the moving without the ball. So now you mold these young guys this season, and then Clay comes back next season, which makes them even more deep and have more depth on the bench, the run is not over by any means. To me, it with them adding Kelly Oubre, it extends it. So, I'm looking at this Golden State team and they at least have four or five years left at contending for a title once Clay get back. Just because Clay and Steph, who's the foundation, who's one of the best backcourts in NBA history, in my opinion, don't rely on athleticism. So with that being said, they could play this style for a long, long time. I love the fact that you I mentioned, uh, you, you know, Ron Adams, because Ron, Ron Adams, Max, is one of the most exceptional coaches this game has seen. He's definitely a lead on that defensive side of the ball. Mike Brown is nothing to sneeze at. He was a former head coach in the NBA in Cleveland and L.A., but he's a hell of an assistant coach. And we just got to give love and respect to Steve Kerr because he's proven to be one of the elite coaches this game has ever seen. You take a team to five straight finals and you win three chips, you got to give respect where respect is due. And so now you look at the part around them and when you add when you talk about adding a Kelly Oubre with or already having Andrew Wiggins and then you top that off with Draymond Green's experience because Draymond's a basketball savant he needs to improve his three-point shooting he he knows that I certainly told him that but if you look at how he plays the game the mind that he has knowing what to do and when to do it he is a special special brother in, in terms of just running a show playing that point forward spot to some degree, and of course, there's Steph Curry. They've got pieces to be formidable enough, not only to make it to the postseason, particularly with the acquisition of Kelly Oubre, but they could potentially make some noise. They could scare somebody. They can knock somebody off. You just never know. I keep hearing about how KD and Clay, and in this case, Clay, because we're talking about the Warriors, don't rely on athleticism, and therefore, an Achilles injury may not be as devastating to them as to another player. That's an intuitive take. That feels right. But I think my, my conclusion may be counterintuitive. Maybe it doesn't feel right, but you've got to think about it. When Dominique Wilkins came back, he, he developed a better shot, right? Because some of the athleticism, even though he had a very successful comeback in Perk, you think, of, well, Dominique Mil Wilkins was a million years ago. No, he's a success story. He's one of the few. Dominique Wilkins came back from this more successfully than many athletes in recent times have, okay? I'm using him as a success story. But one of the reasons that he had success was he developed a better shot, 
right? Like, in other words, if you have a super athletic player who relies on their athletic ability in order to be great, if you take some of that ability away, there are things they can fall back on, developing a shot, playing deep, whatever it may be, right? But if you're already a guy who shoots it better than anyone ever, who's very fundamentally sound, who relies on a lot of the things that the super athletes kind of evolve into eventually, once they're once something is taken away from them, I don't think it's as easy for them to evolve into a new player that compensates for some of so their what are you saying? athletic ability. And whatever you want to say about So play, what are you saying? Are you saying you the Warriors are finished? I'm saying, when, I'm saying the Warriors may eventually get back, but the dynasty is over. They, you have to give credit to the GM, the coach, the owner, Steph Curry, Draymond. How is it they, over they if they may get back? In the form of now Wiseman. It ain't going to be this year. I'm asking a direct question. I'm, I'm, not, do, I'm not speaking. Not, I'm asking a direct question. How are you? How is this over if I, I you may get analogy. back? If you may get back, that means it's not over. I brought, I brought up the analogy, Stephen A. Derek Jeter was on four out of five championship teams starting in 96 <laughs> and ending in 2000. They won again in 2009. It wasn't the same dynasty. It was a new team. If Steph Curry ever wins okay. another championship in Golden State, it will not resemble the same team, and it's going to be years from now. It ain't going to be this year or next year.